Before you listen, if you enjoy the stories and want to hear more, then please consider subscribing. Most of you listening aren't subscribed, so please take this time to subscribe. Turn on notifications so you'll never miss a story and be the first to hear. You'll also be supporting me. Thank you. It was supposed to be just another tedious day at the office, but little did I know the darkness that was about to unfold. I had been stuck hunched over my desk since the crack of dawn, drumming a never-ending sea of paperwork. The dull hum of office machines and harsh glow of fluorescent lights was really starting to grate on my last nerve as the monotonous morning slipped into early afternoon. My eyes were straining from hours of mindlessly zoning out while staring at the solace computer screen. My lower back was screaming from being contorted in the same awkward position for far too long. I was desperate for any excuse to get up and move around, to step away for even just a few minutes before I completely lost my mind in this droning, corporatized hellscape. That's when I noticed something strange in my peripheral vision that instantly sent a cold tingle down my body. The new kid who had just been hired out of college, a baby-faced 22-year-old who still looked like he should be rushing off to his high school ceramics class, was lingering suspiciously in the hallway. At first, I tried to just brush it off, assuming he was probably just a little turned around trying to get his bearings in this maze of drab office cubicles on his first week. We've all been that clueless newbie at some point, awkwardly wandering the halls like a puppy separated from the litter, too timid and embarrassed to ask for directions from anyone. I didn't think much of it and tried to refocus on my monotonous tasks. But then I caught a glimpse of his creepy behavior out of the corner of my eye. The kid's head was unmistakably poking out from around the corner like a meerkat, his beady little eyes locked in a predatory trance while perversely ogling the door to the women's restroom. My heart started pounding as I watched the disgusting scene play out from my vantage point. He was just waiting there, fidgeting back and forth for what seemed like an eternity until the restroom door finally opened. When the first poor, unsuspecting woman finally emerged, the little creep audibly gasped in what I can only describe as a nauseating way, drinking in her presence like a warm glass of milk. He then scampered away in a frenzy, disappearing around another corner before she was any the wiser to his despicable behavior. I felt derby just watching it unfold. This wasn't some skee misunderstanding. This kid was getting sick thrills from perving on his new female co-workers in one of the most violating ways imaginable. At that point, I know I should have immediately reported him to security or the authorities, but a tangled, confused mix of emotions paralyzed me in place. His belief at why I had just witnessed battle with fear over potentially overreacting to a situation I may have misread, or certainly hoped I had misread. Apprehension over potentially ruining a young man's life and bright future over something I couldn't quite wrap my head around warred with anger at such a gross violation of privacy and trust. I sat frozen, my mouth agape as the weight of the moment crystallized. As the agonizing workday dragged on until the afternoon, the uneasy, sickly feeling I had suddenly took root deep in the pit of my stomach only seemed to fester and grow more severe. Every time I wandered out of my cubicle for a refill of lukewarm vending machine coffee, or to use the restroom myself, I couldn't help but catch glimpses of the young predator skulking around out of the corner of my eye. It was always the same patently creepy scene, and just lingering around the corner, waiting for the restroom door to open like a perverted troll waiting to strike. After recounting his span of repugnant behavior unfolding before my eyes throughout the day, I finally resolved that I had to do something, even if it meant potentially overstepping and being viewed as the one overreacting. As a woman myself, how could I just sit idly by while this disgusting act play out again and again, potentially violating more and more of my colleagues? I couldn't meet my own eye in the mirror if I let it go unchecked. The next time I saw the snake slithering back into the hallway after getting his jollies, I decided to take a stand in the most unassuming way possible. I simply got up, took a deep breath, and entered the women's room as normal a few minutes after he had retaken his perch outside its door. I tried to make it seem as natural as possible, giving no hint that I was onto his grotesque patterns and sick compulsions. Sure enough, just seconds after the door closed behind me, shutting with a resounding thud that echoed throughout the oppressively stale bathroom, I heard a scuffling sound from the other side. My stomach instantly nodded as I pieced together what was happening, 
and the little deviant taking his chance to sneak a peek at me in one of my most private and vulnerable moments. With shaking hands, I pulled out my phone, fumbled to open the camera app, and hit record as quickly as I could. I then saw his disgustingly familiar face appear in the crack at the top of the door frame, almost perfectly centered, as he tried slyly peering over into the stall area below. I had him dead to rights, indisputable video evidence of his wicked compulsions. I didn't even give him a chance to process that the table had turned before I threw open the stall door, still recording, and began absolutely reaming him out in a furious torrent of anger, frustration, and disgust that had been bubbling up all day. I'll spare you the excessive details, but let's just say the obscenities were flowing so feverishly that a mob tied truck driver would have blushed. The piece of human waste didn't even have a chance to make an excuse or try to play dumb before I stormed out of the bathroom with video in hand, trembling from the adrenaline rush, and went straight to security. Those poor rent-a-cops had no idea the hornet's nest of a situation they were about to get dragged into based on the crazed look in my eye and the exploitably diatribe I was incoherently screaming at them. To their credit, as soon as they got a look at the nauseating footage and pieced together what was happening, they didn't hesitate in the slightest. Two of the burliest security guards were hauling that little freak away in handcuffs within minutes as I watched through the cloud of dizzying rage, feeling a cathartic mix of relief and disgust wash over me. I later found out through the grapevine he had been instantly fired for his heinous act, but frankly that didn't feel like enough justice was served. It was shaping up to be one of those brutal, soul-crushing nights where the endless deluge of work piled up on my desk felt like the Sisyphean task that would never, ever end. One by one, my office mates had been practically sprinting out the door earlier in the evening like ants escaping a flooded colony, desperate to break free from the harsh fluorescent lighting and bleak rows of cubicles before they went stir-crazy. Not me, though. I was the sucker who got stuck holding the bag, slumped over in my ergonomic roller chair, hunched in front of my laptop burning the midnight oil yet again. Bleary eye and chugging iced coffees well past any reasonable person's bedtime like they were water in the hopes of mustering just enough artificial bravado to plow through another few mindless tasks. As the late hours of the night dragged on in that big empty office space, an eerie, unsettling silence seemed to creep in and slowly envelop everything. Each muted tap of the keyboard and deep inhale of stale office air felt unnervingly amplified against the vacuum of vacant quietude pressing in from the surrounding rows of darkened cubicles. The only sliver of light left emanated from the sickly glow of my laptop monitor, casting my face in some weird sort of bluish-green hue that made me look like an extra in a low-budget zombie flick. The dim illumination created long, sinister shadows that appeared to lurch across the drab industrial carpeting almost seeming to taunt and take on lives of their own in the corners of my vision whenever I stole a glance off. Every cell creak of the age building, straining, and settling onto its very foundation made me nearly jump out of my skin, my nerves feeling like they were slowly reaching a burnout point from putting in such insane hours night after night. The irrational part of my brain couldn't seem to stop playing tricks, convincing me there was someone or something lying in wait just out of sight in the dark recesses of the adjoining offices and hallways. That's when a loud noise suddenly rang out that damn near made my heart completely stop. A dull, heavy sort of thud that sounded almost like something big had just been unceremoniously dropped nearby. The shock of that first thick, muffled thump against the Yuri's silence caused a creep to instantly run up my spine as every hair on my arm and neck immediately stood on end. Okay, get a grip, dude. I muttered to myself through clenched teeth, trying my best to force out the Melundreth wind of skeptical doubt and disbelief. There's no way that was any... Thump. This time it was unmistakable. Another resonating thud that seemed to slowly echo from the direction of the restrooms across the vacant office space. A cacophony of plausible explanations for what the noise could be raised through my rattled mind. A pipe knocking from the old ventilation system. Maybe a raccoon or squirrel that had somehow gotten trapped inside. Hell, even the worst case scenario of some strung out derelict trans person having picked a heck of an odd place to disheveled camp out for the night. Thud, thud, thud. Whenever the source, the relentless thumps and thuds kept coming at an agonizingly steady, almost rhythmic pace that felt like it was building in intensity and volume with each iteration. At first, they seemed dull and listless, 
but the more they persisted, the louder and more forceful the impact seemed to become, escalating into a menacing beat that appeared to be coming closer. My heart started pounding with the ferocity of a sledgehammer against my heaving chest. A cold sweat rapidly broke out across my forehead and the back of my clammy neck. Every single primal intuition was screaming at me to book it out of there as whatever was causing that incessant racket sounded positively unnatural and deeply unsettling. Some kind of evil presence that had awoken and was slowly beginning to stir. Yet against every shred of common sense and good judgment, I found my curiosity getting the better of me. Some tangled mix of masculine bravado and ability to simply let it go caused my gaze to gradually shift down from my laptop screen across the darkened rows of deserted workspaces in the direction of the restrooms. A cold feeling of dread washed over me as the mental imagery of some hulking, disheveled, transient pervert orc. In that moment, with my nerves turned to ruby red and my heart prepared to beat entirely out of my chest, I knew I had two choices. Cut and run out of their tout the suite like a sane person, or pull the bear's claw and go investigate. In what was likely one of the dumbest decisions of my life, I opted for the latter because, well, I'm an idiot. Shakily pushing away from my desk, I quickly surveyed the few meager possessions within an arm's reach that could potentially pass for a makeshift weapon should the situation turn sideways. The element of crime paperweight, too blunt, triple hole punch, too flimsy. Ah, there we go a bright red promotional plastic baseball bat some vendor had handed out as a marketing gimmick to the office years ago. Cheap and hollow as a bat could be for sure, but at least it was something I could aim to clobber first and ask questions later if needed. The lights in the whole darn office building just went out, like poof, gone in an instant. I ain't talking about some dimmy either. I'm talking about a thick, suffocating darkness that swirled around me, worse than the darkest night out of the boonies. It swallowed up every bit of light from the street lamps and even the moon's feeble. Glow creeping through the windows. My heart jumped straight into my throat, and I couldn't see a darn thing. It was like being trapped in a black hole of darkness, and I didn't know what the heck was going on. As I stood there, frozen in the pitch black darkness, trying to make sense of what was happening, I felt something icy cold brush against my shoulder. It was like fingers, but they were cold and clammy. Without a second thought, I bolted, my heart pounding in my chest like a drum on steroids. I didn't dare to look back, fearing what might be lurking in that abyss of darkness. Adrenaline pumped through my veins as I sprinted blindly through the corridors, my footsteps echoing against the empty walls. Panic gnawed at my insides, urging me to run faster, to escape whatever sinister presence lurked in the shadows. Finally, I burst through the doors and into the open air, gasping for breath as the cool night breeze washed over me. My heart raced, my mind reeling from the encounter in the darkness. Whatever had touched my shoulder, I didn't want to stick around to find out. So there I was Friday afternoon, staring at my half-finished report like it was written in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. My brain was officially fried, and the flickering office lights weren't exactly helping. Then I saw it. A bright white sticky note, the kind you'd use to remind yourself to grab milk, plastered right in the middle of my monitor. I'm watching you. Okay, first thought, prank. Our office had a real knack for turning office supplies into weapons of mild terror. Remember the time they switched everyone's staplers with those novelty rubber hand ones? Hilarious, right? But this one felt different. I scanned the deserted cubicles, my heart doing a nervous tap dance against my ribs. The usual Friday afternoon chatter of gossip and complaints about the overflowing coffee pot was replaced by an eerie silence that made the fluorescent lights hum sound deafening. Had everyone left early? Nope, a quick glance at the clock confirmed it was still prime time for office shenanigans. Just as I convinced myself it was just someone being a jerk, my computer chimed. An email. From an unknown sender with a subject line that made me want to crawl under my desk and hide. Look under the sink. My brain short-circuited. Was this connected to the note? Curiosity battled fear, but the need to know what the heck was going on won the fight. I practically yeeted myself out of my chair and shuffled towards the bathroom, legs like Lee Pipes. The sterile white tiles gleamed under the harsh fluorescence, casting long, creepy shadows that made me jump at my own reflection. Taking a deep breath, I reached down, handshaking like a chihuahua in a windstorm, 
and grabbed the cold metal handle of the bathroom cabinet. It creaked open, revealing a dark abyss that sent chills down my spine like a rogue ice cube rolling down your back. Gingerly, I peered inside. A single crumpled photo lay hidden in the back corner. My fingers brushed against dust bunnies and forgotten band aids as I reached in and unfolded the picture. The scream that died in my throat felt like a punch to the gut. It was a picture of my boss, Mr. Croker himself, and my wife, Sarah. Way too close, way too friendly. My stomach lurched. This couldn't be real. It had to be some messed up joke, a cruel way to mess with my head. But then I saw another picture, hidden behind the first. This one was older, faded around the edges. It was Sarah alone, beaming a genuine smile in front of the very same building I worked in. On the back, a single inscription. Congratulations on your new job, honey. See you soon. Love, Sarah. My mind went reeling. This wasn't a prank. Someone was watching, someone who knew everything. Panic clawed at me. A world, the one I thought I knew, tilted on its axis, everything I thought I knew crumbling like a stale donut. I stumbled back, foot catching on the edge of the cabinet door. It slammed shut with a bang, the sound echoing through the silent bathroom. I froze, the only sound my ragged breaths echoing in the silence. Then, a scraping noise came from behind the cabinet. My blood turned to ice. I spun around, heart hammering against my ribs like a trapped bird. The cabinet door was ajar, a sliver of darkness peeking through. Slowly, inch by agonizing inch, it creaked open further. I couldn't scream. I couldn't move. All I could do was watch, paralyzed by fear, as a pale hand, impossibly long and bony, emerged from the darkness. Its claw-like fingers twitched, beckoning me closer. Then my phone, plus its little notification light, went off like a disco ball in a blackout. The harsh ring tone shattered the oppressive silence, and I fumbled to answer, voice cracking as I stammered, Hello. Static filled the line for a moment, then a voice, cold and devoid of emotion, spoke. You shouldn't have looked. The line went dead. I stared at the phone, handshaking like I'd just chunk a pot of espresso. The cabinet door remained open, but the hand was gone. Had it ever been there? Was it all a terrifying hallucination triggered by the photos and the creepy note? No. The pictures were real, their implications too horrifying to deny. My perfect life, my meticulously constructed world, lay in ruins at my feet. I was a pawn in a twisted game, and the rules were unclear, the stakes impossibly high. Before I could even formulate a response that wasn't just a stream of incoherent mumbling, the line went dead, leaving an unsettling void in its wake. I stared at the phone, its screen now blank, reflecting the hollowness that seemed to have settled. Within me like a bad burrito, the cabinet door remained ajar, a silent, mocking reminder of the unselling glimpse it had offered. But was it real? Had a disembodied hand truly emerged from the darkness, a scene ripped straight from a creepy internet story, or was it all an elaborate figment of my sleep-deprived imagination, fueled by the unsettling photographs and the cryptic message? My mind raced, desperately seeking a logical explanation, but logic seemed to have abandoned me on this particular Friday afternoon leave me stranded on the shores of the surreal like Tom Hanks and cast away, only without the volleyball or the luxurious beard. The photographs themselves, however, were undeniably real. The picture of Sarah and my boss, their faces unnaturally close, sent a jolt of disorientation through me like a bad head trip at a concert. The inscription on the back of the older picture confirmed Sarah's previous connection to the company, a connection I was completely unaware of like finding out your favorite band's lead singer used to be in a bubblegum pop groove. This revelation shattered the carefully constructed narrative of my life, leaving behind a gaping chasm of doubt and suspicion deeper than the Mariana Trench. My meticulously crafted world, filled brick by painstaking brick, lay in ruins at my feet. The life I thought I knew, the life I'd taken for granted like that free donut day at the office, was now a tapestry woven with deceit and secrets, reminiscent of a trashy reality TV show. I was a pawn in a twisted game whose rules were yet to be revealed, forced to play alongside a faceless adversary whose chilling voice hinted at a malevolent presence far greater than myself, like playing poker against a robot that can see your cards. Oh, 
Okay, so picture this, Friday night, cleaning crew central. Usually the office is my oyster after everyone else leaves, but not tonight. Mr. Creepy smiled himself. Our boss, with a permagrin that could curdle milk, was pulling an all-nighter. Stuck finishing up a report, I felt like a hamster on a wheel, the fluorescent lights buzzing like angry bees over my head. The silence was deafening, except for the occasional creak of the building selling its weary bones. Then, I noticed it, a faint hum coming from above. Like a dying fridge in a B-movie horror flick, it thrummed with a low, insistent vibration. Our building was a relic, a monument to a bygone era where companies valued brick and mortar over sleek glass and open floor plans. The upper floors, shrouded in mystery and whispers, were strictly off-limits. The only decoration on the double doors leading to them was a faded, hand-painted sign in bold red letters, strictly off-limits, practically begging to be ignored right. Curiosity, a persistent itch I couldn't scratch, gnawed at me. Seriously, a forbidden floor in an old building. That's practically an invitation for someone with a healthy dose of morbid curiosity, which in my case was a whole buffet. Ignoring the voice in my head that sounded suspiciously like my mom lecturing me about stranger danger, I fumbled for my key ring, the familiar jingle somehow amplified in the oppressive silence. The key, cool and worn from years of use, fit perfectly into the rusted lock. It clicked open with an ominous click, like the start of a cheesy horror movie, the kind I usually mocked my brother for watching but secretly enjoyed. A stale, metallic smell hit me as I pushed the door when a crack, sending chills down my spine. The emergency lights, usually deactivated during the day, cast an eerie, greenish glow over the deserted hallway, revealing dust bunnies dancing in the air like miniature tumbleweeds. Each floor looked like a scene from a post-apocalyptic office flick, a graveyard of empty cubicles and conference rooms. The chairs pushed in neatly as if awaiting their occupants who would never return. The air grew colder as I ascended. It wasn't just a physical chill, but a primal fear that prickled at the edges of my consciousness, a feeling like I wasn't alone. Every rustle of papers from an unseen source, every creak of the aging building, sent my heart leaping into my throat. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw something move, a flash of something dark darting across the hallway. I spun around, adrenaline coursing through my veins, but saw nothing but a pile of old file boxes stacked precariously in the corner. Just my nerves playing tricks, right? Then I saw it, a hidden door tucked away in a dark corner, practically swallowed by the shadows. Curiosity, now intertwined with a healthy dose of fear, propelled me. Forward like a moth drawn to a flame. The rusty hinges groaned in protest as I pushed the door open, revealing a dark staircase leading upwards. Descending into the inky blackness, I felt a primal fear grip me tighter than a bow constrictor. The air grew colder, thick with a metallic tang that intensified with each shaky step. My flashlight, the only source of light in this oppressive darkness, flickered like a dying ember, casting creepy shadows on the damp walls. A rhythmic tapping echoed through the stairwell, hitting louder with each step I took downwards. It sounded like something scratching, like metal claws scraping concrete. Panic clawed at me, urging me to turn back to run like hell, but my legs were frozen in place. I stumbled back, tripping over something unseen in darkness. My flashlight clattered to the floor, plunging me into an abyss, a cold, suffocating darkness that seemed to press in on me from all sides. I squeezed my eyes shut, heart pounding like a drum solo of a heavy metal concert. In the darkness, all I could hear was a ragged rasp of my own breathing. Then silence. The growling and scratching stopped, replaced by an eerie quiet that felt even more terrifying than the sounds that came before. Slowly, I opened my eyes. The darkness remained, but the oppressive feeling had lifted. A faint glow emanated from somewhere above. With shaky hands, I fumbled in my pocket and pulled out my phone, activating the flashlight. The light revealed a narrow passage leading upwards, a sliver of hope in this sea of darkness. Taking a deep breath, I steeled myself and stepped forward, each step echoing the oppressive silence, leading me who knows where. This is probably a bad idea, but hey, you only live once, right? Or maybe not, based on what I might stumble upon next. Thanks for listening in. If you like these stories and want to hear more, then please subscribe and like 
and support this new channel. We have more stories for you to listen to.